Hello dear, welcome to another episode. This lesson is for JavaScript intermediate developers. After taking this course, you should be able to develop an interactive website. Today's topic is titled JavaScript Detecting Back Button in a Browser. There are terms whereby you use modal to display custom information. This modal may cover the entire window screen. If user click on the browser back button, it will go back to the previous page instead of the current page. This episode focuses on detecting back button in a browser so that when a user click on the back button, it will remove the modal instead of navigating to the previous page. So back in our Sublime IDE, we have already set up a div tag that is going to occupy the whole width and the entire height and we gave it a background of red currently we are not seeing this particular div tag also we have a button in our browser when you click on this button it's going to show this particular div tag that we have here so refresh and just click this is the div tag that we have now when i click on this back button you can see that instead of we to remove the div tag we navigate to the previous page so what we want to do for this episode is to try as much as possible to deactivate this button from navigating to the previous page so the question that will pop up in our mind right now is how do we do that firstly we need to detect that this back button has been clicked or this forward button has been clicked and the only way you can do that is when you use an event listener. The event listener that will be applied here is called pop state listener in JavaScript. The pop state listener is used to listen to events that occurs when window history changes. So immediately we'll add that to our JavaScript. So window dot add event listener. Call this particular event listener pop state and we'll give it a function of let's just say detect history. So we'll create that particular function in this place. So let's just copy that at. So anytime this back button is click, this particular function will be run. So anytime this particular button is click. What you just want to do is to add history to this particular page. So in your Google Chrome, you can navigate to history using the um, control plus ish, or you can just use your menu and click on the history. Okay, right now we only have index.html as our history so anytime this particular button is quick is click what we want to do is we want to create an imaginable history that is going to appear at this place but this history is not actually imagine imaginable imaginable because this history can contain some arguments or queries that we can use to populate that particular modal imaginable okay imaginable 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 oh imaginable is imaginable so to create that imaginable history we use a particular method in javascript that is known as push state and this push state is coming from the window element the window object so window dot history dot push state. So the first thing that we want to write is our state, the state that we'll be pushing, and you can put it in form of an array. So I'm just going to use an ID and make it to be equal to one. Then the second thing that you want to put is your title. Your title, um, you can just put anything you want, but I don't actually have a title for this, so I will just make it null. 
and the last thing that you want to put is your queries so your queries is what the argument that you'll be sending to that particular page so it can be q equals to this and um, u is equal to um, beware let's just write beware so anything that you want you can actually write it here or if you don't want to put any queries you can simply use none there is nothing wrong in using none so for this particular episode i just want to show you how you can use queries Control s that so it simply means that when this particular button is clicked, it shows up the red div tag and we have just added an history to our browser. And when this back button is clicked, that is when we detect a back button or change um, in the history. What we just want to do is to remove this particular um, div tag. And the only way we can remove that particular div tag is when we use a display of none similar to our css display none control s that and let's try that in our browser now we'll take note of the history let me just expand that we'll take note of the history the first history that we have here is index.html so just look at when i click on this button so when i click on the click me button we have our big red um background so back to our history if i refresh you can see the queries q equals to 1234 and u equals to beware has just been added to our history so from this particular push state we can actually add anything we want to this history and we can populate this data into our model using the get queries so Now that we have this, the next thing we want to do is to click on this back button. Remember that when we click on this back button, we actually navigate to the previous state, previous page. Now let's see if it will still navigate to the previous page or if we will just remove this particular um, div red background. So when we click on this back button, you see that we just removed the div red background. We did not navigate to the previous stage. So there you go. This is using javascript to detect back button in a browser now the the window history has been explained in our javascript pre-class lesson so if you want to know more about how to use the window history such as the window.history.back and the rest of them other method you can actually look that up in the javascript pre-class lesson goodbye and see you in the next episode.